Nicole Stevens is a member of the class of 2016. She will be speaking today about environmentalism and sustainability in day-to-day -day practice. Would you want to sunbathe on this beach? Would you even dare to walk on it, hoping that no plastic bags get caught on your feet? No one wants to see trash on the beach. When you go to the beach, you want it to be clean and pristine, because that's why you come to Florida. Yet humans are still responsible for dumping millions of tons of trash into the oceans every year. However, we can easily reduce this pollution with a conscientious effort to do so. Have you ever heard of red tide? It's awful. When you go to the beach, your eyes can burn, it's hard to breathe, and there's hundreds of dead fish all over the shore. Florida red tide is caused by K. brevis, a type of algae that releases toxins into the air, which can cause the harmful effects of red tide. With excessive amounts of nutrients in the waterways, K. brevis will grow, thus contributing more problems for people and fish. Runoff from industry and fertilizer from your very own backyard can contribute to the harmful effects of red tide. These are two problems that people working together can easily solve. The best solution for trash pollution is obviously not to put trash in the beaches in the first place. However, if trash pollution does occur, many organizations and people work together to do coastal cleanups to clean up this trash. I will address this later in my talk. The best solution for people like you to get involved in to help combat the issue of red tide is to use less fertilizer in your gardens to prevent runoff into waterways. Many organizations, such as Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium in Sarasota, Florida, work to combat the issue of red tide and to study the complexity. Moat also works to study the health of Sarasota Bay as a whole. I have had an internship there for over a year in which I study the health of Sarasota Bay. Through my program, I research biofiling organisms like sponges, barnacles, mussels, clams, and other small filter feeding organisms. These creatures are small and often easily overlooked by people, but they are clear indicators for the health of the waterways. Since they are filter feeders, all of the water in the bay passes through them, so if there are any contaminants, they are the first to know. Throughout the year, we recorded and documented water conditions and how they related to the growth of these organisms. We helped real scientists to document the health of Sarasota Bay. Through my MOAT program as well, we took a trip to Moat Marine's tropical research lab on Summerlin Key in order to study coral farming. Scientists from Moat discovered that if you break up corals into smaller, smaller pieces, each of these pieces will regenerate faster than if you have one big coral of the same size, because there's more surface area for the corals to grow. Scientists grow these small corals in labs, and eventually when they reach a certain size, will reintroduce them into the wild. Corals are important to conserve because they're the basis for reefs. Without corals, many other organisms, such as fish, which we use for food, will die. Learning about coral farming was interesting because it's a specific way people are working to solve the problems of the world instead of just figuring out what these problems are. This year through my program, I'm specifically studying how human impact influences the aquatic environment. Through my experiences at Moat, I was motivated to create a change in my own school to increase awareness of recycling and conservation for the oceans. I discovered the Youth Ocean Conservation Summit, an organization dedicated to empowering young people to bring awareness to the oceans. Members of the Environmental Club and myself received a grant to fund our very own project from the Youth Ocean Conservation Summit. We constructed a vertical garden by growing plants against the wall in front of the school cafeteria. Vertical gardening is beneficial because you can grow more plants in a smaller area, thus you don't need to waste ground space by growing them horizontally on the ground. Further, each plant is contained in its own pot, so there is less fertilizer runoff into waterways, which can potentially lead to things like red tide, like I mentioned earlier. In our garden, we grew herbs, which will hopefully be used for student lunches, as well as Florida natives. It's important to grow plants that are native to your area because they are already well suited to the environment, and you don't need to waste things like precious nutrients like water in order to keep them alive. In order to get the rest of our school involved in our project and to demonstrate the importance of recycling, club members spent months collecting almost 60 plastic two-liter bottles. These bottles were distributed to groups of 9th through 11th grade students for a decorating contest. 
The most well-decorated bottles were selected to be used as pots for the plants in our vertical garden. All the rest of the students who were, took part in this contest were able to walk past the garden every day and hopefully were encouraged to reduce and reuse. When we received the space for our garden, it looked like this, kind of messy and unkempt and overgrown, but club members came in over the summer and on weekends in order to make it better. We cleared out weeds, we brought in trellises, we, planted all, we put up all the bottles and planted all the plants, and eventually the garden turned into this. Now it is bright and cheerful to walk past every day and hopefully encourages recycling on campus. As members of the Environmental Club, we serve as ambassadors for recycling for the student body. Some plastics can take up to a thousand years to fully decompose. Thus we waste space and energy by keeping them in landfills. Landfills are also likely to leak and le can potentially leach harmful contaminants into waterways. Throughout the year, we did multiple presentations to the student body in order to educate the importance of recycling. We showed videos and PowerPoints in order to do so. We also painted the lids of all the recycling bids on campus blue, like this one, so they're more noticeable to students, so more people could recycle. Remember that messy beach from slide one? Well, students in Environmental Club worked to solve this issue. We came in on Saturdays to clean up a nearby beach. And each time we go, we collect several bags of trash. Students in Environmental Club work to clean up the beaches, but they're not the only ones who do this. There are many other organizations that people like you can easily get involved with in order to do beach cleanups. One of these specific examples in our area is Tampa Bay Watch. Tampa Bay Watch does things like these cleanups in addition to seagrass restoration and invasive plant removal. Thanks to organizations like these, the bay is now cleaner than it was back in the 1950s. In fact, International Coastal Cleanup Day was last Saturday, September 19th, and many people from throughout the entire planet worked to clean up the nearby beaches in their areas. So people like you can also do this throughout the year. If cleanups aren't your thing, but you still want to help out the environment, you can always volunteer at a local aquarium. I have personally volunteered at the Florida Aquarium for over a year and a half, and it's tons of fun. You get to work with great scientists and feed amazing animals like sea turtles and penguins, in addition to tons of different kinds of fish. Important, aquariums are very important because they educate people about the aquatic world, and people get to see what these animals really look like, so they will be inspired to conserve these precious ecosystems for future generations. In summary, our Earth is in trouble, but you can make a difference. Make sure to get involved with your school to try to make a meaningful change. Start conservation projects or an environmental club if your school doesn't have one. Use less fertilizer, especially close to waterways, so there's no harmful pollutants that go into the waterways that can potentially lead to things like red tide. Additionally, always make sure to reduce, reuse, and recycle to make our way of life more sustainable. In summary, our Earth is in trouble, but you can make a difference because we are all one big community and must each do our part to work to make the planet more sustainable. Thank you.